Hello YouTube, welcome to another edition of Sonoran Reef. Today we have a unboxing. Let's see what we've got. Okay, so the question that's on all of your minds What's in the box? Well, we have a Vectra M1 pump. Let's take a look. I've already opened the box here, but let me give you the gist. There's the box everything came in. There's the pump itself. The controller and then the power supply and the power cord that it comes with and the instructions now a couple weeks ago you'll remember that I said I'm never gonna just buy the latest and greatest thing and do a review on it I'd test it out this is a product video I'm gonna be trying to do these about once a month as I buy a new product and try it out I'm not going to give you a review just like this one. I waited a couple weeks of using the product before I just threw up a video on YouTube. So why am I doing this review, you ask? Well, it's because I already have a M1 vector pump. So, as you can see, there is in dead center is the controller for my vector M1 pump. There's a slight problem though. I'm looking at the controller it looks like it should be pumping water. Everything should be great, but dun dun dun! I have no water coming out of either return. So I called Ecotech Marine, explained what it was doing. It was giving me a low voltage error message through my email. And Ecotech, being the awesome company that they are, said, we'll send you another one. So, even though I really don't want to, it's time to swap out a return pump. So the reason why I don't want to swap out this return pump, and please forgive the condition of my sump, it took a couple days to realize the pump wasn't working and then get one ordered and then it was over the weekend, but you can see the pump is way back there so this is going to be a major pain in the butt to swap out but we're going to give it our best shot and hopefully get it done before bed it's eight o'clock now so that's not going to be uh, likely but we're going to give it a try okay well you can see that I've got the pump out that's always the easy part only took a couple of minutes because of the way I designed the plumbing but now comes the tricky part putting it back in without any leaks so let's get that going here okay so what I've done here is I've taken a paper towel and put it under the union where I was most worried about a leak so I'm going to go ahead and let it sit without the pump being turned on, but there's water in that pipe now, so any leak should show up on the paper towel as a wet spot. All right, I've got the new power supply in, the new controller in, and I'm going to check that paper towel real quick and make sure that it's dry. All right, the paper towel's dry. So here comes the moment of truth. Looks like we have some flow. All right. I'm going to clean up a little bit and then I'll show you how to calibrate this pump. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Apex Fusion and I'm going to shut down all of my Ecotech products. Now the reason I'm doing this is because it's much easier 
for the Reef Link to find a device if there aren't other devices currently on at the same time. So I've turned everything off. I'm going to turn the vector back on. All right, now I'm in EcoSmart Live. I'm going to Devices. As you can see, all my devices are kind of grayed out, which means that they're not communicating at the present time, which is exactly what I want. I'm going to click Add a Device Wirelessly. Now this should go pretty quick since I don't have all of the other devices giving me conflicts right now. So we'll just wait a second. There we go. So there's the unnamed device. I found it right here. So I'm going to grab that device, click it, and it's going to say add here. Just go right over there. Add. And it is now adding the device. There it is. You can see it on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and rename the device right now. We're just going to call it return pump. Okay, that saved. So now I'm going to go back into Fusion and I'm going to turn all of the devices back on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click them on on first and then I'm going to go back to auto. This is a little trick I've learned. Sometimes if you just switch them back to auto, they don't turn on right away. So they are all on auto. So now I should be able to go back into devices and if I refresh the devices they should all come back up oops it doesn't look like they all came back up it looks like my two radions are still grayed out so let's go take a look and see why ah because they're off I forgot the schedule turns them off. I did this video pretty late at night. So I'm going to go ahead and manually turn those on. Go back into EcoSmart Live one more time. And if I hit refresh devices this time, everything should come back on. Let's take a look. And they're all back up. Perfect. So now it's time to show you how to calibrate. So let's go ahead and hit done, get out of here, and we'll start the calibration. All right, to start calibration, you're going to go over to the word vectra and you're going to go over here to calibrate now. So once you hit calibrate now, you're going to get this instruction menu to let you know the pumps are about to shut down once you hit get started. So now that I've done that, the pumps have shut down, the lines are draining, and once they are drained completely, we're going to go ahead and hit next. Now we're going to skip through this. Um, this process takes about 10 minutes. and We're going to do it two minutes total. But here we go. We're going to hit next. eventually okay perfect now the pump is slowly ramping up and we're gonna hit stop as soon as we uh, see a little bit of water coming out now what I've gone ahead and blown this up for you so you can see it and I'm waiting for a little water to trickle out Perfect. A little bit of water is coming out. Now I can manually increase or decrease it, but I have the perfect amount of water coming out right now. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this. I'm not going to increase or decrease. I'm just going to go ahead and hit save. Okay, now the pump is ramping up to 75%, and I don't want 75% to be my max speed. I'm going to crank this up to 100%. So let me blow up on this a little bit more and we're going to bring that bad boy all the way to 100 percent 
and we're going to hit save and finish. Now once I hit save and finish, this process on this pump took about oh, 5 or 10 minutes. So we're going to skip through that. You don't need to see all of that. So here we go. Now it was on the screen for about 5 minutes, but eventually it broke through. We'll zoom out a little bit and you'll see that when the screen disappears, you just get your regular screen again. And at that point, you can start scheduling your pump to do whatever you want. So, what are my thoughts on the Vector M1 pump? Well, um, I think it's the best pump out there, especially for this size tank. If you have a huge tank, then go with the L1, but for me, the M1 is the workhorse. It does everything that I needed to do in this 140 gallon tank. Um, I hope this video was a, uh, well it was enlightening for you if you're considering uh, purchasing a vector pump. Uh, if you're looking to replace your current return pump, I think it's a great pump. Um, what I like most about this pump is the company that makes it. You know, when I had mine stop working, they didn't question me. They didn't try to troubleshoot it with me over the phone. Um, they just said, you know what? It's reading, it has an issue. We're gonna replace it. No questions asked. And that's the kind of company that we should all wanna give our support to. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you get an M1 pump, I hope that uh, it helps you in getting it set up within your system. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks for watching Sonoran Reef.